That new heart's still a rock star. We are all very excited to see this big heart beating in this human. My dad's a fighter. He chose to do this. Welcome to a special edition of Frontline News. I'm Larry Roberts in the University of Maryland School of Medicine News Center. In a historic medical first, doctors and scientists of the University of Maryland School of Medicine have successfully transplanted a genetically modified pig heart into a Maryland man, saving his life. David Bennett was terminally ill and did not qualify for a human transplant. Following emergency authorization from the FDA, the groundbreaking xenotransplant was performed by a team led by Dr. Bartley Griffith, who says the patient is doing as well as can be expected. He's uh, no longer requiring any kind of assistance from a breathing machine. He's able to talk to us. He's enjoyed the presence of his family. He gave me a big thank you today, of all things. It just set me back on my heels. You know, I should be thanking him for, for all he has done. David Bennett Jr. says his father is anxious to go home and feeling grateful. My dad's a fighter. He was chosen to do this. Um, he chose to do this. He wanted me to know that regardless of what happened, he wanted to help people. Um, he, he realized even more uh, days leading up to the surgery that this provided opportunity and hope for others. So far, there are no signs of rejection and the pig heart is performing well. That new heart's still a rock star. It seems, it seems to be reasonably happy in its new host. Beating strong? Strongly. Um, uh, I would say it has uh, more than exceeded our expectations. The pig heart was genetically altered to help prevent the patient's immune system from attacking the transplanted organ. We have uh, modified 10 genes in this, in this pig heart. Uh, four genes were knocked out, three of them responsible for producing antibodies that causes rejection. So those three genes were knocked out, and then one gene was knocked out to control the growth of pig and its organs. Dr. Mohammed Mohadeen has spent decades advancing this breakthrough science, which may one day alleviate the shortage of transplantable organs. You know, it is a game changer. Hundreds and thousands of people all around the world who are waiting for the organ, and unfortunately, just like this patient, may not qualify for an organ transplant. So uh, with, if xenografts uh, become readily available and are allowed to be put in in these patients, all these patients could receive a, a, a heart or any other organ from these uh, modified pigs and um, would be able to, we would be able to save their lives. Well, there's medical history tonight at the University of Maryland. This is remarkable, truly remarkable medical news. The story was covered by thousands of media outlets around the world. A gravely ill man receiving a pig's heart. Bartley Griffith, medicine professor at the University of Maryland, said, Dr. Reese says the history-making transplant is the epitome of translational science in action. Well, the University of Maryland School of Medicine is a research intensive medical school that is committed to using research to improve human health. And so it, it invests a significant amount of its resources in research that is not theoretical, but research that is really based on disease states that we can improve either in a short term or even in the long term. The Bennett family is grateful for the extraordinary level of care provided by the University of Maryland Medical Center. He requested specifically when, when he started having the heart disease to come to the University of Maryland. Well, your dad with his strength and then your family and our team collectively yeah. have given him this best possible chance. Bennett knows his father has a long recovery ahead. He's struggling. He's struggling a lot. This, this is going to be a process. And so I'm trying to find things to encourage him at this point. Everybody believes in you. Everybody is praying for you. From cardiologist to anesthesiologist, the transplant surgery would not have been possible without teamwork and cooperation. In the case of the xenotransplant, we've had three anesthesiologists, Dr. Patrick O'Donker, Dr. Eric Strauss, and Dr. Brittany Williams, who've been working in the lab with Dr. Griffin, Griffith and his team to help perfect in our case, the anesthetic techniques that would be needed, but obviously to assist in the overall investigations they're doing. So we, we've had a multi-year collaboration 
with Dr. Griffith and his team. And I think that really enhanced our ability to care for this patient. We then had to pull together groups of of, of individuals from psychiatry to ethics to infectious disease to infe infection prevention um, to the uh, critical care uh, folks that were involved to the surgeons. So there's multiple levels of teams involved. And that's our special edition of Frontline News. Thanks for joining us. I'm Larry Roberts. We'll see you again in two weeks.